Hey guys, I'm back. So today I'm going to be talking about this power supply, I guess you can say, that I built. And it's going to lead in a nice segue to ESR. So um, all it is is basically a bunch of high voltage caps, like I think 160 or 200 volts. And I, since I'm in the U.S., I have a mains of 110 volts. It comes in here, it gets rectified, and then it gets charged up by these caps. I have it shorted out right now. Uh, just in case, because electrolytic caps can actually build up uh, excess charge. And then it stores them up, and then I can dump all this power really quickly, because of the cap's low ESR, into essentially whatever I want. So usually I just end up shorting out some bolt or something, but it's it's quite an explosion. It's, it's really quite nasty. Um, so let me show you guys... And then we can get to explaining the actual um, science. It's, it's quite loud, though. So what I'm going to be doing is I have this bolt here, and you can see it's already been charred. From Okay, so if you can see that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just plug it in, right? Okay, so now it's charged up. It's charged up, and then watch this. That's spectacular. If, in fact, we are to zoom in on this, you can see it's actually... So, um, some of these bands were from before, but you can see the damage it's done to this nail. And you can also see, in fact, um, the damage it's done to the paper clips. Um, let's, let's do it on the copper end this time. I'm going to grab the inductor. Okay. Get ready. Wow. Oh, you can see, if you can look really closely, uh, let's just make sure there's, oh. Yeah, oftentimes you gotta, you gotta do it a second time, because it, it can still remain charged. And then what you gotta do is you actually got to um, take it and short it out with alligator clips, because, the, like I said, the electrolytic caps can also charge um, themselves back up again, which would be a really bad thing if you were to touch it accidentally. So, um... You can let me know in the comments what you want me to blow up with this thing, because this is an insane amount of power. In fact, I'll probably calculate it and put it on the screen. Um, but you can see what it has done after repeated uh, strikes to this um, nail here. I had taped it onto the end of a toothbrush so I don't get anywhere near this thing. Uh, it's quite loud. It's very, very loud. Um, loud and scary. This is probably the scariest thing I've actually ever built, really. Um, in fact, I, I once I shorted it out uh, for the first few times over this screwdriver, and you can see what um, you can see what it's done right right here here, and it's pretty nasty. It'll it it'll, it'll probably spot weld um, a couple of things. I mean, it's it's a ton of power. So um, why can that? Why is why does that happen? Right. I mean, for one, we know, if we head on over to the paper here, we know that that's an insanely high voltage. I should write with a laser and just do a time exposure. That would be really cool. Just, uh, you know. Anyways. Um, so, we're going to talk about why does that happen. Well, it's something called ESR, or equivalent series resistance. So, in this case, what we do is here's our circuit at the moment. So we have a bridge rectifier, so we have the AC mains coming in here, and then I'm not gonna actually draw the bridge rectifier, but um, maybe I'll do a separate video on bridge rectifiers and rectification. Who knows, that'd be, that'd be pretty interesting. Anyway, so we have the bridge rectifier, I'll just label that BR, and then here we have the plus and the minus. So the minus would be this rail, the plus would be this rail, okay? I have fairly thick wire, because there's probably, I haven't tested it yet, uh, I should, uh, a few hundred amps of current running through 
uh, these wires instantaneously when it shorts out. Um, and then I have several caps, uh, so all electrolytic caps, um, right, just like this. And um, these caps are all in series, so essentially the voltage is limited to, these caps are, I think, the lowest voltage at 160 volts. And if you take, um, they're going to get charged up to maybe 100, 140 or something, because 110 is actually, uh, is not the uh, total um, AC value, it's the effective value, or the RMS value, pretty much, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's actually going to get charged up to a bit more than the RMS, maybe 30% more. Um, so that puts us around 140, which is, you know, safely within the 160, although it's a little bit uh, high. But you know what? This thing is exploding anyway. So if it's going to explode, might as well. Um, although do be careful. These things are very dangerous. It could really hurt you or kill you possibly. So it's a lot of power, like I said. So what happens is these caps all get charged up in parallel. So what happens is essentially if you put caps in series, right, um, you double the voltage, but you essentially have, if it's the same value cap, you essentially have the capacitance. Whereas this, in, in this circuit, the voltage stays the same, but the capacitances just get added on together. Because if so say we were to just short this out, right? What's happened is the current's going to flow from this cap and then from this cap and then also from this cap and it's going to flow through. And so the current is going to be tripled. The capacitance is going to be tripled. It has triple the capacity, assuming these are all the same value, to dump current through, okay? So if we take our capacitor, excuse me, and uh, we charge it up, right? Let's assume it's already charged up. What happens is this is our ideal value of a capacitor, okay? So this is what we have in our, in our circuit over here. And this is our ideal value of one of the capacitors in the circuit. Okay, our actual, our actual model is like this. So we have a resistor in series with the capacitor. And this resistor has a resistance value in ohms. And this is what is your equivalent series resistance. Because res it's the, basically the resistance equivalent series. So the resistance is equivalently in series with the cap. And this resistor will limit your peak current. Because if you know your basic Ohm's law, what happens is the resistor will resist current going through. So some voltage will be across this resistor, and heat will be generated through this resistor as a lot of current through, going through. As I mentioned, you have many hundreds of amps flowing instantaneously through this cap. So a big value, in this case, say we pick like 5 ohms, is going to generate... Yeah, 5 ohms would be a pretty poor value. 5 ohms is going to generate quite a bit of heat and quite um, a bit of voltage drop, which is going to limit your peak power output. Whereas, um, so, so this is like 5 ohms, this, you get this problem with batteries, right? I can charge this array up to any voltage I like. I can charge it up to 12 volts and it'll still spark. Not as fantastically as it will at that higher voltage. So the problem with batteries is that batteries actually have quite a significant internal resistance. So if you take a cap here with its internal resistance, and yes, I know I'm drawing resistors American and European style. I use them interchangeably. Um, and then we take a battery, right? So battery on the right, capacitor on the left. Um, a, a battery's equivalent series resistance is typically like 0.1 ohms. This limits the typical, the, the total power that can be dumped out of a battery. So essentially you can't discharge one of these batteries instantaneously. A cap, however, this value could be low as 0 0.001 ohms, right? That's really low. That allows you to discharge tons of power continuously. This is why if you short out a battery, it gets really, really hot because you have this resistance limiting you. So the power is going through this resistor and then it's heating up and voltage drop across this resistor. So that's why you can't use batteries at, at super high currents because especially the smaller the battery, the higher the ESR typically. So with these caps, what allows you to dump the ridiculous amounts of power ridiculously fast is the super low ESR, or the resistance that's equivalently in series with the cap. You want this value to be low as you can, obviously, because that allows you more efficient power through the cap and faster power through the cap, and the cap will heat up less. And with these electrodes, heating up is very bad because that destroys them. It, um, it lets the electrolyte vent, and then the caps become destroyed. So in fact, a lot of problems, you can find that if something breaks, right, if, if one of your pieces of electronics breaks, uh, it's typically going to be because one of the caps, the ESR, started to go up. Okay, so um, 
the SR started out really low, right? And then it started to skyrocket almost exponentially, right? So anything under, for a cap at least, 0.1 ohm is, is acceptable, right? And you can run them up to, you know, an ohm or so. An ohm is, is pretty high. It'll still work. I mean, not for the application that I'm using this for, but for power supply filtering, uh, it'll still work, you know, for um, RC filters and, and the like. Um, It'll probably still work. For oscillators, it'll still work. Um, and anything past that, the cap just starts not working for anything. So at 5 ohms, the cap's totally dead, right? Like I said, even 1 ohm is pretty high. So um, what happens is that as these caps heat up, they actually, um, you've probably seen this, they get bulges on these tips. So these caps are all flat, which is good. That's the way you want them. But as they heat up, um, and as they go through their lifetime, they'll actually start bulging and, and venting the electrolyte a little bit. When they start bulging, their ESR starts going up, and they start to become unusable, essentially. So you can find that if something breaks, if one of your pieces of electronics breaks, you can usually actually just go through and replace any electrolytic caps with a bulge, or replace all of them, even if it's a small enough piece of electronics, like a Mindstorms or something. Uh, not that I had the problem with the Mindstorms, I just had it nearby as an example of even your digital multimeter or something like that. Um, power supply, oscilloscope, whatever. Um, that The ESR went too high and be made the cap unusable, so uh, you can just go through and replace the caps, which will lower the ESR. So that's the secret that's behind this power supply working, is equivalent series resistance.